Hello, welcome back to my educational blog, It is English Literature. I am Ardhendo De. Today, we are going to discuss characteristics of epic poetry. It includes both folk and literary epics. And I will try to distinguish it from other genre of poetry. As you all know, by virtue of invocation, homeric similes, Coric nature, high seriousness, and in media stress, the athletic contest, plus on these characteristics and more in our present lecture. Though epic is considered by Aristotle as second only to tragedy, no elaborate discussion on epic is available in Aristotle poetics. Uh, there are other mentions of tragedy and other poetry or other features or elementary critical discussions, but uh, no such elaborate discussions on epic. Many critics uh, have dealt with some salient characteristics of epics as a distinct form of literature. Now, what is an epic? Epic is a long poem written in a grand style on a great and serious subject. I think you are all familiar with the kind of epic and its features. Uh, simply an epic celebrates in the form of continuous narrative the achievements of one or more heroic personages are taken from primarily from history or legends or mythology. The doings of these heroic personages are usually warlike, uh, heroic involving large members of secondary characters and there is a background of gods and spirits who join in the whole process of war or in other kind of actions from time to time. Now classifying the very design of epic poem um, obviously, I am talking about both primary and secondary epics. Primary includes those oral traditions of epics and secondary epics are literary epics, of course. We can find out the elements of invocations, epic similes or which is known as also Homeric similes, Coric nature, high seriousness in media's race, athletic contests, and other features but these features are not inclusive there are other key features that are uh, somehow somewhere missing but basically these are the common features so our discussion starts with invocation the very first characteristics of an epic is that it always begins with a prayer or an invocation. At the very outset of the epic, the epic poet is found making a prayer to some gods or muses like that of Saraswati Bandhana uh, to inspire him in his contemplate task or writing a great poem like epic. For example, we can take Milton's Paradise Lost. It begins with uh, a prayer humble call to Holy Spirit. Form of invocation is also present in Homer's Iliad, Virgil's Enid, part reading invocation of Virgil's Enid, which begins with some immortal lines. I think of arms and the man, he who exiled by fate first came from the coast of Troy to Italy and to Lavinian swords hurled about endlessly by land and sea, by the will of the gods, by cruel Juno's remorseless anger. Long suffering also in war until he founded a city and brought his gods to Latium, and from that the Latin people came the lords of Alba Longa, the walls of noble Rome, Meus, 
tell me the cause how was she offended in her divinity how was she grieved the queen of heaven to drive a man noted for virtue to endure such dangers to face so many trials can there be such anger in the minds of the gods so again in balmaki's ramayana also begins with a kind of invocation and here it says praise to balmaki part of charming song who mounts on poesy's sublimest spray and sweetly sings with accent clear and strong rama ai rama in his deathless lay fair breath the man can listen to the strain that flows in music from balmaki's tongue nor feel his feet the path of bliss attain when rama's glory by the saint is sung so these classical poets call the muses to their aid at intervals when they have something especially important to relate so in the initial part invocation tardily states to the goddess to the muse to the poet for poetic aid even in medial or even in end part he invokes to that spirit to tell or to imbibe the spirit of writing some sublime in the part of heroic similes the second most important characteristic of an epic is that it always uses long drawn similes which are often called homeric similes the name derives from homer because he has extensively used it in his epics milton also follows this practice of using a quite a number of long drawn similes in his paradise lost the epic similes imply a kind of a dignity of style in which the comparison stipulated in nothing plain or common place but of certain magnitude and a wider range it is so often called a poem within a poem because uh, that part of the epic simile is itself an extended poem and it can be treated as a separate entity we may uh, refer to a beautiful epic simile used by milton in books 1 of paradise lost when uh, milton goes uh to describe saturn's gigantic size he compares him to a huge typhoon and a sea beast called leviathan whose vast size is a matter of great wonder again in uh, from the original source from homer homer gives us a description of the armor of achilles which runs through several pages so this extended similitude or extended similarities or pages of similes is a kind of extended poems milton again in paradise lost while describing the shield and spear of saturn goes pages after pages line after lines so these kind of descriptions are the very features of epical poetry so these homeric similes are somewhat a kind of a missing part in ramayana and mahabharata ramayana and particularly in ramayana such epic similes are missing but intrusive or other rhetorical themes are interpolated uh, but a peculiar homeric simile that are the style of um, english poetry or kind of western epics are quite missing in ramayana and mahabharata the third most important feature of epic poetry is its choric nature professor tilliard in his explanation to the epic poetry has called it choric 
uh, what you mean by koik is uh, that epic poetry is in its sense of public a nationalistic or a kind of a particular tribe the poet here uh, not only expresses his own thoughts and feelings but the thoughts and feelings of some large groups and communities uh, dante's divine commedia for example uh, was in many senses a spokesman for the medieval christianity and milton's paradise lost uh, which we can take for example here and uh, this is for english and european criticism similarly in ramayana and mahabharata are the mouthpiece for indian conscience it is said that if you can't find anything in mahabharata uh, there is no existence of it in bharata that is in india The fourth characteristic of epic is that it is always marked by what has been called its high seriousness. The poet knowingly sets out to make something which will be the best of which he is capable of. Milton in particular had this kind of high sense of duty and dedication. He leads a busy life in politics of his time and yet he always preferred himself or find himself or felt himself to be a man chosen by god to write a poem which uh, would place him or his england among the greatest and cultural nations of this world so his notion is that of pious notion of making his country proud so he is the motivation of making his poetry is such a epical one such a universal one that could lead his own country into a stature who heard from the country as well as his name can be proudly uttered in media stress as the roman critic and poet of horace in his ars poetica Uh, calls it that uh, epic begins in the middle of the story that is medias res the narrative then goes both in flashback as well as forwarding for example the story of paradise lost begins with the loss of paradise and then we learn how they are fallen how saturn takes revenge uh, in homer's odyssey and the reader finds fast learns uh, of course the odysseus journey when he is held captive on calypso's island the reader then finds out in book 9 through 12 of course uh, that the greater part of odysseus journey uh, precedes that moment so it's a story in flashback Uh, in the uh, likewise manner in mahabharata it opens in media stress we, we 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 get the whole story in flashback athletic contest is another characteristic of epic and it involves a kind of a description of some kind of athletic contest or games Uh, this rather surprising feature is found in most sophisticated epics homer tells how achilles arranged a day of athletic competitions in honor of his dead friend patroclus and in virgil's aeneid he also followed the same device in arranging a funeral games uh, in his epic part in it and these kind of uh, games are plenty in ramayana and mahabharata and that we find the pandava brothers as well as kaurava brothers are having some games or archery competitions so these are all included into the epical features so epic must be written in a grandiloquent style and basically apart from these features grandiloquent style is very 
essence the long and the dangerous journey made by the hero um, in most of the epics as we find should be described with all majesty milton describes certain journey to pace with a dignified style while befitting of an epic in fact milton's style is marked by the richness of imagination the majesty of melody and a superb descriptive power in whole of the epical features we will find a kind of continuity and a kind of continuity of the spirit of humanity that is the key features that are not so strikingly said but it is underneath so while understanding epic poetry we must have to remember that these epical features are strikingly and in identifying in epic poetry the common feature is also is its universality the voice language and tone will touch the whole of the world in unison so nowhere in the part of the england nowhere in the part of india nowhere in the part of rome there is a separate epic that has been told for the people of their country when this universality or its core elements are exceeded that part of humanity then the epic as a successful writing is proved and established and accepted so with this understanding that these are the elements or these are the features that you will find out in epic poetry and you will be able to classify accordingly i here conclude this lecture and if you have any kind of queries regarding this epical feature you just pop up here ask me a question i will try to give you an answer as far as possible so like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel bye bye